Hi, my name's Rich Clark, and this is my creative writing mastery journal for full sale for my creative writing master's program. I've entitled this program From My Hippocampus to Paper. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about the courses that we take, some of the industry leaders, clubs and organizations that I'm a part of, personal, my personal learning network, my full sale community, and the people that I work out with or hang out with there. Uh, qualities that I find uh, required for a mentor, uh, the timeline for this program, and then, of course, my references at the very end. First one is this course, Mastery, Personal Development and Leadership. And uh, for each of these courses, I try to pick a short-term goal, a mid-term goal, and a long-term goal. And I'm going to highlight on one or two of the goals on each slide. But for this one, I just wanted to highlight on uh, the second one, uh, which is to find the golden nugget in current Broadway music. And my strategy for this is to um, study the scores and music of Pasek and Paul uh, and Sondheim and the other leaders of Broadway music um, to not only look at their scores, but to figure out what makes them work and what makes them click. And the next one I'm gonna be in is the art of visual, visual storytelling. Um, and then the goal for this one is to demonstrate moving an idea from my head to paper. And uh, I'm going to do this by reading uh, Becoming Superman uh, by J. Michael Straczynski. Um, I had the opportunity to work on the audiobook uh, of the same title uh, with Peter Jurassic reading that. And during that time, I didn't really get to experience what the book was about because I was doing the technical part. But I did understand the book was really about how he gets those things out of his head and onto paper. And you'll see references, uh, if you look at my third one, uh, Reclaim My Alone Time. Um, I'll reference Julia Cameron several times in here, actually two of her books, uh, The Artist's Way, and another one I'll tell you about in a little bit. But I'm going to take my, my artist date and try to reclaim some of my alone time, uh, where I can get my brain working the way I want it to. Class after that is character creation and development. Um, the first goal I have is to create character books. I already do this um, in a way. I was taught this by one of my high school uh, writing teachers. Um, and we created character books for Reader's Theater back in the day. And so each of these books had a, a full dossier, if you will, on each of the characters, including their backstory, psychology, um, how well they did in school, what classes they liked best, who was their favorite teacher, down to, I mean, minute details. Um, and then the second goal is kind of related to that, and that's to develop a multi-level depth into my characters. And I'll use whatever resource I can find. Um, if I'm looking for somebody that's crazy, I might go to the DSM-5 and find traits and characteristics of certain mental illnesses. Um, the Film and tele Television Literature Index at Full Sail in the database is awesome for reading through um, some things about characters. And then Medline, if I'm looking for a medical problem with my character. And then, you know, my goal again is to have a good therapy appointment with one of my characters daily. And that's to get in their head and talk to them and think, and hear what they have to say. After that, we get into script analysis and criticism. Um, and my second goal, know when I'm beginning to stress out. That's one of my big problems. I just get stressed and it just keeps adding up. And I try to overcomplicate things. So I want to apply the KISS principle. Keep it simple, silly. Don't make it harder than it is. Episodic and serial writing. Uh, this is going to be where I get to find out how my character books match story arcs and how I put the two together. Um, and one of those is uh, the video. Um, writing the craft of the story by Cron, it's excellent and it goes into depth about that and then my last goal don't force creativity uh i have close the hanger door in there um that comes from my air force days when we'd get home from work we would close the hanger doors when we left so we didn't take work home with us we would leave it there so we could come back to it at another time and really get into the essence of what we were working on creative writing portfolio one well, I remember seven project and portfolio classes from my undergrad at Full Sail. And if this is like any one of those, this is where we demonstrate whether we got the goods or not. And um, 
for this one, I go back to my creative contract from um, The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron, um, where, where you kind of make a contract with yourself and to do it the right way at the right time. And that's is where I'm gonna have to turn it on is during project or creative writing portfolio one. Writing for film and animation. This is kind of what I like to do, kind of what I want to do. Um, my goal for this one is the middle one is to accept negative feedback. And I put in parentheses there, be nice to my baby, it's fragile. Um, sometimes when we're creatives, we produce these things and we are so attached to them that when people say things bad about them, we don't think that it might be a way to make it better, but we look at it as a way that, oh my goodness, you just gave my baby a black eye. Um, and this is the other book I was telling you about by Cameron. It's Cameron's Strategy for Older Adults. Um, it's Cameron and Lively. They wrote it together. And it's for older adults like myself that are entering a new phase or our third act. And we're trying to enter into a creative realm coming out of from where I came from, which was government and corporate. The next class is writing for games. Um, and this is where we figure out how to write for games. And when I was in my music undergrad program at Full Sail, I found out that writing music for games is very, very different than composing for anything else. Um, we used a process called vertical composition instead of horizontal composition, where we would write maybe four or five different parts over the same time phrase, but then those different parts were triggered by different things that happened in the game. So you might have two of your parts playing together, or you might have all five playing together, and all five of those parts have to sound musically coherent. And so I'm sure that writing for games is going to be very similar to that, where we have to learn how to make the story coherent, even though they may pick up elements of the story at different times during their journey. And after writing for games, we have multimedia adaptation. And this is where we're going to learn to use our storytelling skills in different methods and different ways of delivery, um, very similar to what we did in our undergrad uh, music production is we had to figure out how do we deliver for games? How do we deliver for, um, you know, a TV spot? How long is the TV spot? Five seconds, 12 seconds, 20 seconds. And we have to write exactly to the hundredth of a second. And sometimes it's challenging. And I'm sure writing for multimedia adaptation will be just as, just as challenging. Then we get to advanced storytelling, advanced visual storytelling. And this is where we're gonna expand more on what we've learned in the beginning, where we kind of put the whole thing together um, and produce an acceptable storyboard and script. And that's what I'm looking forward to, is to, to actually seeing that come out of my brain and get onto a piece of paper. And then my last goal on this one, I love it. Um, it's gonna be April by the time I get into this class and we should have a spring break somewhere in that time. And if it's safe enough, I would love to go camping for that whole week and just leave all my electronics at home. And creative writing portfolio too. This is where we do and submit our magnum opus or our thesis. And this is something I'm really looking forward to. Uh, when I did it in project and portfolio seven for my undergrad, it was, quite an achievement when you got done and you looked at it and you said, oh my God, I created that and it's good. And I'm looking forward to doing the same thing in creative writing portfolio when I submit that final script and somebody goes, hey, this is really good. Oh yeah. And I'm going to be at graduation this time because this COVID thing is going to be over and I'm not going to miss this one. And I'm going to hopefully be able to do both at the same time. So hopefully we'll see you down there in uh, August. And the last class is the business of creative writing. And this is where we learn how to keep money in our pockets and not get sued. Um, it was a very similar course that we had in the uh, undergrad music production class. And we got into some of the things of, you know, what you have to be careful of and things that you may not think about and things that you just might be ignorant of or just have never been exposed to. And it gives, it, it gives you a great awareness of what you have to be careful of and where your money's going and where it's coming from. I'm going to look at some of the industry leaders. Um, I personally know all but the last two of these people on this list. Um, David Loudermilk is a producer director that I've worked with here in Wilmington doing sound design for. Uh, Isabella Izzy uh, is a stage manager and production manager. She's currently working out in Los Angeles and I worked with her at Thalian Hall here in Wilmington. Um, Michael Straczynski is a television screenwriter, author. Uh, he wrote the book, Becoming Superman. Um, 
And it's his biography of how he became a writer and broke into the business. And I got to meet him when we recorded the audiobook. Uh, Peter Jurassic was the voice talent for the audiobook that we did. And he is a actor and professor of acting at UNCW here in Wilmington. And I speak to him and meet with him frequently. The other two are kind of on my wish list, and that's Lynn Manuel Miranda, who is actually doing what I want to do, which is, uh, well, except for the acting. The composing librettist and lyricist is what I would love to do. And uh, he really showed us how to do that with his award-winning musical, Hamilton. The last person on that list, James Lapine, is a director, playwright, screenwriter, and librettist. He is also doing everything I want to do. And he was one of the co collaborators with Stephen Sondheim during Stephen Sondheim's revival in the mid 80s. Clubs and organizations here locally I am part of the Wilmington Writers Workshop which is hosted at UNCW Wilmington and we meet every month and discuss what we're working on and we have juried reviews of our work and sometimes it hurts and sometimes it's really pleasurable. I also work with Thalen Community Theater here in Wilmington. It is the oldest community theater in North Carolina. And we actually do our productions at Thalian Hall, which is a very large uh, theater that was built in the 1800s and has been renovated twice and is absolutely a wonderful venue, except for the audio system. It's horrible, but I do work some magic with that. The other group that I work with is the Wilmington Regional Film Commission in conjunction with Film NC. And I do some work for them kind of on the side in their computer department uh, because they're a nonprofit and I can volunteer down there once or twice a month to help them with stuff. My personal learning network, um, Variety Magazine. Yes, I am a subscriber. Yes, it's expensive. It is worth it. And if it was on Flipster, I would cancel my subscription um, because it's that good. There's more information in there about what's going on in the entertainment world than any other magazine out there. Um, Billboard magazine, I get that off Flipster. And that is one that is dedicated to the music industry specifically. And Playbill Professional is a subscription website that goes really behind the scenes into Broadway, what's going on, what shows are being produ produced, what jobs are available, what sound design contracts are up for bid and whatnot. And that is a subscription that runs me, it's about $40 a year. So it's not too terribly bad, but it is some of the best information for Broadway stuff. My full sale community uh, is the Creative Writing Club, the Veteran Student Union and the Full Sale Music Creator. So I kind of tie into all three together. And at some point I may actually delve into the idea of creating a full sale musical theater group. Mentor qualities. I've been a mentor and I've been mentored and throughout the years of doing it, these are the, the seven qualities that I came up with. Um, and really the, to me, they just make sense. Um, if I'm being mentored by somebody, I don't want them to keep secrets. I want them to tell me everything they know so I can absorb it and use it. Um, I want them to be approachable approachable and available. I don't want to feel like I'm bothering them to do this. It has to be something that I, they look forward to me showing up. Inquiv inquisitiveness is I want them to challenge me with deep questions. I don't want them to ask me simple questions that I know the answer to. I want them to ask me questions that make me scratch my head and go, whoa, let me figure that out. I want them to be objective yet fair. I don't want them to pick on me. You know, I want them to, to give it a good look, but do it fairly. Um, diplomatic yet honest. I want them to tell me the truth. Um, and I want them to do it in a polite way. You don't have to be a jerk to get your point across. I want them to be prepared. I want to know that they have a plan for the time that I'm investing in them and they're investing in me. And I want them to be accomplished and respected in their field and preferably published. It's a wish list item, but I know, but it's something I would like to see. And a lot of these characteristics have been developed through me mentoring other people and getting feedback from them from what they've wanted and then things that I've desired in a mentor as well. So in my timeline, first month in mastery, I'm going to reinforce my creative goal, seeing that it leads to the intermediate and long-term goals, visual storytelling, 
learn to tell my story in different formats, character creation and development, get into the psychology and backstory of my character, script analysis and criticism, dig deeper into film and television scripting, episodic and serial, figure out how the stories and characters arc together, and in creative writing portfolio one, produce a workable script. Writing for film and am animation, a properly formatted script. Everything I've read says that's the difference between make it or break it. Writing for games, developing storytelling skills in a different way. And sure, it's different, let's just like the music. Multimedia adaptation, produce and develop media for different audiences and delivery. Advanced storyteller, advanced storytelling, the whole cradle to grave process. And then portfolio two, submitting my thesis and exceeding standards and expectations. That's why I'm doing this. And then the business of creative writing, figure out how to make money and not lose it through lawsuits. Here are my references. The list is long and yeah, kind of long, but it, they were good and they're worth reading. And you can add me. You can find me at rcsoundworks.com, uh, LinkedIn at RC Soundworks, or you can email me at rich at RC Soundworks. You can also phone me if you wish. However, if you are not in my contact list, my phone does not ring. It just sends you straight to voicemail. So please leave a voice message and I will get back to you very, very quickly. I wanna thank you again for listening to this presentation and I look forward to seeing you down the road.